quick. We don't have much time, and we need to tell you everything you want to know about Disneyland right now. So buckle up, because we're hitting the vacation planning fast lane today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We are back in California today to make sure all you folks out there who are in the process of planning an epic Disneyland vacation can learn the basics and the hottest tips right now, even if you've only got time to watch this on your lunch break. If you want to keep the planning going after you get off work today or just when you've got more time, maybe even right now, then make sure to scan that QR code you see on the screen or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disneyland plans. And we're going to send you a free digital download of what you need to prioritize to craft your perfect three day Disneyland getaway. Okay, first up, Disneyland has two parks. Let's take it from the top. It's not just Disneyland. It's two parks, and one of those is still called Disneyland, but the other is Disney California Adventure. These park entrances are literally within steps of each other, so if you purchase a park hopper ticket to visit both parks in one day, you'll be able to easily travel between them without having to worry about a whole lot of extra travel time from place to place. There's no buses or anything. The most common way you get to both of these parks is by strolling through the downtown Disney Shopping District, which is lined with restaurants and shops that you can hit up either before or after your park day. Basically, Disneyland is a whole lot more compact than Disney World. While Disney World is over 27,000 acres, around the same size as San Francisco, Disneyland, with both its parks and shopping district, only covers about 500 acres. Now, there are also three hotels. Along with the parks and downtown Disney District, you've also got three Disneyland hotels you can choose to stay in, if you want to stay immersed in the Disneyland bubble. These hotels include the Grand Californian Hotel and Spa, Disneyland Hotel, fitting, right? And Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel, which is currently being remodeled and will transform into Pixar Place completely by the end of 2023. There are several benefits to staying in one of the Disneyland hotels, like being within walking distance to the parks at all times, and getting the early theme park entry perk, which will let you into either park on any day, 30 minutes before the parks officially open to anyone else. However, these hotels are pricey, with standard rooms usually ranging around 300 to 900 plus per night depending on where you stay. Paradise Pier tends to be the cheaper of the options, while the Grand Californian is the priciest. For a cheaper hotel room, that'll keep you close to the Disneyland property, but will also more than likely cost you way less to stay in per night, you can look into good neighbor hotels instead. Disneyland has more than 50 nearby hotels that they partner with, called good neighbor hotels, that will give Disneyland guests cheaper room options. Each hotel will have its own benefits as well as downfalls, so make sure to check the good neighbor hotels listings on the Disneyland website to see if there's an option that'll best fit your hotel criteria. A lot of these are within walking distance of Disneyland as well, so definitely check out that little note that tells you how far from Disneyland they are. Okay, ticket prices are broken into tiers. Now here's the simplest way I can explain Disneyland's ticket options in just a few sentences. You've got two options for theme park tickets. You can either purchase a one-day ticket or you can purchase a multi-day ticket. Either ticket option also has the ability to tack on park hopper capabilities for an extra cost and park hopping begins each day at 11 a.m. With me still? Great. For a one-day only ticket, prices are gonna vary. Disneyland explains the price range of their one-day tickets as a tier system with tier zero being the cheapest days and tier six being the most expensive. But to put it plainly, if you're planning on buying a one-day ticket during non-peak seasons, like around the back to school time or the beginning of the year, then your ticket will cost less. Meanwhile, peak season prices like during the holidays and spring break will cost more. However, if you're purchasing a multi-day ticket, your ticket price is fixed no matter what time of the year you visit. A two-day, one-park ticket for adults is $285, while a two-day park hopper will cost $345. And if you want to stick around the parks for five days, that'll put you back $415 for one park per day tickets, while park hoppers will cost you $475. For more ticket prices, you can check out the Disneyland website and their ticket calendar, which will break down the single day tiers even further. Oh, and one more thing. You will need to make a parks reservation after you purchase your tickets to save your spot in either park. The Disneyland website or the Disneyland app will prompt you to do this immediately so you don't have to worry about forgetting. Now, I just mentioned the Disneyland app, so this is free and it's gonna help keep all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. This is where you're gonna make lightning lanes. More on that in just a second. You're gonna keep hold of your dining reservations, check current ride wait times, link your park tickets and hotel information, mobile order from the park's fast food locations, and find photo pass pictures taken of you throughout the day. 
Okay, so that's not all this app does, but that's the main gist of it. You don't have to download this app to go to Disneyland, but it's like a Swiss Army knife for your trip. Instead of holding on to each of those tools individually, you'll be able to keep them all nearby in one compact location. My advice, download it way ahead of your trip so you can get familiar with all its different features. Now, one thing you want to make sure you do while you're in the midst of planning your trip out west is check the hours and events calendar on the Disneyland website, because park hours, they change. Park hours for both Disneyland parks can vary. Sometimes the parks will stay open later till around midnight, but sometimes they'll close earlier for scheduled events. Show times can also vary day by day as well. In fact, Disneyland's fireworks don't always happen every single night above Sleeping Beauty Castle. During busier times of the year, fireworks will be a more regular occurrence, but when things start to slow down for the park, fireworks might be limited to just a couple days out of the week, with the rest of the nighttime castle performances being projections only. Fortunately, you don't have to plan a trip and just cross your fingers that the fireworks will happen. The hours and events calendar will keep you consistently updated at least a month in advance. Now, since Disney World is a whole lot bigger, transportation tends to be a bigger subject on the East Coast, but Disneyland's transportation options all boil down to four key methods. You can take the monorail, you can walk, you can take a hotel bus, and you can drive. We've already talked about how easy it is to walk from place to place in Disneyland, but if you want to take a monorail ride into the Disneyland park to avoid walking through the entirety of Downtown Disney to get to the front gates, then you'll need to board the monorail at the Downtown Disney District Station, which you'll find right across from the Lego store in the shopping district. It's a little closer to the Disneyland Hotel than it is to the front gates of Disneyland. Just make sure you've got a valid theme park ticket and park pass reservation before you board, since this monorail ride will take you straight into the park and spit you out at the Tomorrowland entrance instead of the main gate. If your hotel isn't within walking distance of the parks, then you're either going to need to catch a rideshare or drive. If you take a rideshare like Uber or Lyft, there are two different drop-off pickup locations they can take you to. Either A, the passenger pickup area for the Downtown Disney District, which is close to the bus station, or B, over at Harbor Boulevard, which is close to the Anaheim Hotel, located just minutes walk away from Disneyland. But if you drive over, there are three places for you to potentially park. There's Mickey and Friends parking structure, Pixar Pals parking structure, and Toy Story parking area. As you get closer to the Disneyland bubble, you'll start to see signs pointing you in the direction of these parking garages. But because the Mickey and Friends and Pixar Pal parking structures are still a bit of a walk away from the main entrance esplanade, tram services are available that can pick you up and take you the rest of the way. And since the Toy Story parking area is even further out, you can take one of the Disney shuttles to the parks instead. I know, I said there were no buses, but sometimes there's a bus. Parking is $30 plus per day, so make sure you budget that into your trip expense. Okay, there are multiple ways to hold your tickets. So what happens to your tickets once you purchase them? When you buy your tickets, you'll be given two options. You can either A, receive a physical ticket, so like a normal plastic card, like a credit card, or B, have an e-ticket sent to your email, which you can then choose to print out or keep on your phone. As long as you have a barcode to scan with the purchase info, you'll be good to go. You can purchase Disneyland tickets through the website or through the Disneyland app. If you purchase them through the app, then you can also scan your ticket barcode through the app to enter the parks as well. And then there's the option of downloading your ticket info onto a Magic Band Plus. Magic Band Plus is a premium wristband that can be connected to your Disneyland account and has a number of features, one of which includes acting as your park ticket. You can purchase a Magic Band Plus on shopdisney.com or at numerous Disneyland gift shops once you're on property. After you purchase your Magic Band Plus, here's how you'll get it connected to your Disneyland account. First, tap the band to the back of your phone. This will open up your Disneyland app. Second, follow the in-app instructions to link your Magic Band Plus. While this is taking place, you'll assign your band to a ticket and pair it with your phone. A Magic Band Plus can only be assigned to one ticket at a time. And third, well, that's it. You should be good to go. If you have any problems with this, head to guest services. Now, here's how to pay to skip the lines. Guess it's about time I summarize the entirety of Disney Genie Plus and Lightning Lanes into just a few minutes, so wish me luck. <laughs> to skip over the big bad lines in Disneyland, you can use Lightning Lanes, which will allow you to bypass the main queues in exchange for shorter lines. There are two ways in which you can purchase Lightning Lanes. The first and main method is with Disney Genie Plus. This is a premium planning service that's going to give you access to several Lightning Lanes, but not all of them, for whatever park you're visiting that day. To learn 
learn about the nitty gritty details of this service, make sure to head to our main Disney Genie page on the DFB website. I'll link it down below for you. But for now, let's focus on the unique rules you'll need to know for Disneyland's version of Genie Plus that differ from purchasing it in Disney World. Guests can purchase and add Genie Plus to a park ticket or a vacation package in advance for $25 per ticket per day, or purchase it once they enter a theme park, which is subject to date-based pricing starting at $25 per ticket per day via the Disneyland app. Lightning Lane selections can only be made upon entering the theme parks and not a minute sooner. You gotta be in the park to make a Lightning Lane. Along with your Genie Plus purchase, you can also enjoy unlimited PhotoPass downloads all day long, and that's for everybody that has Genie Plus. Plus. The second method for getting a Lightning Lane is with an individual Lightning Lane purchase. This means you'll have to pay your way past the main queue line per person per ride for the most popular rides in the park. This includes Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway in Disneyland, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance in Disneyland, and Radiator Springs Racers in Disney California Adventure. These all vary in price, but it's going to be between probably $7 and $25 depending on how busy it is and when you're riding. All right, it is time to talk food. Now, if I started talking in detail about every single place you could grab food in Disneyland right now, I would have to kiss that 15 minute time constraint goodbye. Fortunately, we have several videos already on our channel that talk about the best eats in Disneyland, which you can check out right after this. I think we even have a video called like best food in Disneyland. So for now, let's talk about the food basics and the restaurant types you'll find around the parks. Restaurant number one, quick service locations. These are your cheaper fast food options. Some of these have basic offerings like hot dogs, pizza, and chicken tenders. Others might offer something more unique like bread bowl soups, Marvel themed creations, and internationally inspired eats. Restaurant type number two, those standard sit down table services. This will be your typical sit down meal that's nothing too fancy, but will get you in the AC for a bit while you order off a more extensive menu than you'll find at the quick services. Table service restaurants could serve up a smorgasbord of comfort classics like you'll find at Riverbell Terrace and Carnation Cafe in Disneyland, or they may offer something completely different like how Cafe Orleans is all about the Cajun inspired dishes, or Naples Ristorante Bar in downtown Disney is all about the Italian fare. Restaurant type number three, themed and signature dining. Now it's true, there's some sort of theming or store line going on behind the scenes for every Disneyland restaurant, but there are some restaurants that take that immersiveness to the next level, which also means their prices tend to be steeper as well. You'll find that themed dining in restaurants like Blue Bayou in Disneyland and Carthay Circle in Disney California Adventure. Restaurant type four, character dining. Character dining is a lot like themed dining, but more interactive and kid approved. While you're chowing down, fan favorite Disney characters will come up to each table to meet and greet you. Prices for these experiences vary, but they're typically pre-fixed, like how buffet pricing works. If your family loves getting the chance to chit-chat with characters like Mickey and Goofy and Disney princesses, then character dining is a great way to do all that without having to wait in long lines inside the parks. And lastly, this isn't a restaurant, but there are select times throughout the year that Disney California Adventure holds festivals. And during these festivals, you'll be able to taste your way around a ton of different festival food booths, as well as check out limited time entertainment and exclusive merchandise. DCA typically holds three festivals each year. Lunar New Year is around January and February, Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival is March and April, and Disney's Festival of Holidays is mid-November to early January. One final note before we move on, for those standard table themed and character dining opportunities, you will need to make advanced dining reservations to secure your seats most of the time. ADRs can be made 60 days before your trip, and some restaurants might have last minute reservations and walk up wait lists, which you can check either on the Disney Disneyland app or by asking the host at the front of the restaurant. But general rule of thumb, if there's a restaurant you know you're going to want to eat at, make the reservation and don't leave things up to chance. All right, ready for rides. Much like the restaurants, there are tons of rides you can hit up between both Disneyland and DCA. In fact, we got a video out now where we rank them all. Several of the rides are gonna be great for the whole family. They're heavily themed, slow going, and have some rather impressive animatronics and sets and state-of-the-art tech going on in each room. There are also rides that are gonna be more thrilling, like the coasters and Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout Drop Tower, and will require you to be a certain height to ride. Check these height requirements on the Disneyland app or website before your trip if you're traveling with younger kids in tow. 
Along with the rides, you've got several other attractions to look forward to, like immersive shows, character meet and greets in both indoor and outdoor settings, parades and fireworks extravaganzas, and gift shops. So many gift shops. Our friends over at All Ears actually have quite a few videos out where the team explores the Disneyland parks and checks out as many attractions as they can fit into a single trip. So make sure to swing by their page when you get the chance and tell Quincy and company I said hello. But what happens when life throws you a curveball and you have to cancel the Disneyland vacation plans you've already made? What then? Well, first and foremost, Disneyland park tickets are non-refundable on their own. However, if you purchase them with a vacation package, meaning your Disney hotel and park tickets are bundled together, then you can get a full refund up until your 30 days from your scheduled trip. The good news about the separate Disneyland park tickets is that they don't expire for a whole year, so you can always reschedule them for another date out in the future if that works better for you. Even after these tickets expire, that money you used to pay for them can always be applied toward future purchases of new tickets. You'll just need to call and talk to a Ticket Pro cast member who can get you all set up. If you're trying to cancel a Disney hotel reservation that's also separate from a vacation package, you have up to five days before your arrival date to cancel and receive a full refund. If you can't cancel 24 hours before, you'll still be charged the entire reservation price. And if you cancel between that five days and 24 hours, you'll lose the amount of one night. As far as restaurant cancellations are concerned, that just depends on the restaurant. According to the Disneyland website, restaurants offering advance reservations charge a per person cancellation fee for reservations canceled after the designated period or for no shows, which much like Disney World's cancellation policy is usually $10 per person on the reservation. That being said, each restaurant on Disneyland property has its own cancellation policy. So you'll wanna double check those policies before finalizing any table service reservation. And just like that, 15 minutes has passed and you're now set to start planning your Disneyland vacation to its fullest. Just in case you missed it the first time around, I'm tossing that QR code back on the screen again for you right there so you can grab our free digital download to help you plan that dream three-day Disneyland trip and keep the planning momentum going. So scan that code now or head on over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disneyland plans. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.